Um, I chose to use a PowerPoint today because I, I have some lists of things, uh, and as we go through very quickly, I want to be able to just show them to you and how you see them. And I also have a couple of models uh, that uh, require kind of a visual picture for you to be able to understand and, and for me to explain. So um, we'll, we'll do it this way. Thank you very much, uh, Maria, for inviting me. And I'm excited to share with you today the research that we have been doing. The family is perhaps a society's oldest and most resilient institution. From the beginning of human life, people have grouped themselves together into families to find emotional, physical, and collective support. Family structures vary across the world, and yet the family endures. Therefore, healthy individuals within healthy families are at the core of a healthy society. Families are our most intimate social environment. They're the places where we begin the vital processes of socializing our children uh, in partnership with countless others in the community. A healthy marriage and family can be a valuable resource in helping us to endure the difficulties that life brings. On the other hand, unhealthy or dysfunctional relationships create terrible problems that may persist from generation to generation. I really can't start talking about family strengths and, and what makes a strong family without introducing you to my own family, so you'll have to bear with me. I have three grown married sons and one grandchild so far. We aren't the perfect family. I don't think anybody has a perfect family, but we're strong and we're getting stronger every day. And I think that's what the message is that I, I want to bring to you today. Okay, the focus on strengths, family strengths, brings a more reasonable balance to our understanding of how families succeed today in face of all the problems and the difficulties that we have. By focusing only on a family, family's problems, we probably ignore the fact that it takes a really positive approach to be successful in a family today. A family strengths perspective is a worldview or an orientation towards life grounded in research conducted around the world. It doesn't ignore family problems, but restores them to their proper place in life. They are vehicles testing our capacity as families and reaffirming our vital human connections with it, each one of us. Over the past three decades, researchers in the United States and around the world have studied families from a strengths-based perspective. Um, John Defray, who is one of the major conductors of uh, the research on family strengths for those 30 years, uh, would like to have been here today. He was supposed to be in a conference for family strengths in Mongolia and somehow ended up having knee surgery, so he couldn't go to either one. Um, but he was one of the original, and uh, so the University of Nebraska, the University of Alabama, and the University of Minnesota are the three major players in this uh, research. Research on strong families has not only resulted in models for better understanding, qualities of strong families, but it's also suggested a number of propositions that have importance in how we look at families in general and how we uh, can successfully live in our own families. I, I can't bring you all of the propositions today. It's quite a long list of things that we now know as a result of what we've been studying. But let me just give you a few of those propositions. Strong marriages are at the center of strong families. There's very re little relationship between money and family strengths. Uh, one of the things we hear over and over and over is the best things in life are not things. And one thing that we've said about the uh, research that we've done in the United States is that you often hear um, about the stories of what they did with in their families while they were washing dishes. Um, and that being great memories for them. You never hear them say, oh, it was the time we went to Disneyland. <laughs> strengths develop over time. Strengths 
are often developed in response to challenges. When seeking to unite groups of people, communities, and even nations, uniting around the cause of strengthening families can be a powerful <laughs> strategy. Those are just a few of the propositions that we uh, have identified. Let me talk today mostly, though, about what, what is the International Family Strengths Model. Drawing conclusions about families on a global level is a very difficult task. As a starting point, we chose to use the discussions of 18 countries, which, which represent a diverse sample of all the major regions of the world. And here are the countries that we used uh, as we embarked on this uh, study. The variety of information that the authors provided was fascinating, and each presentation was unique. We asked eminent professionals worldwide, representing a wide variety of countries and cultures, to write about the difficulties that families face and how families use their strengths to meet these challenges. The 43 co-authors each approached this task from their own unique individual and cultural perspectives. And the diversity of their responses were pretty remarkable. From the very beginning, we believe that a creation of such a volume would have two major contributions to the field of family studies. First, we thought the text would help the reader conceptualize families around the world from a strengths-based perspective. We believe this is a useful way of organizing our thinking about the multiplicity of families living in so many diverse cultures and have found that without some way to do so, it would be very easy to become overwhelmed by just the differences and not be able to see the striking similarities from culture to culture. Second, we believe that the very, from the very beginning that this study would advance a, the level of theoretical understanding about family strengths. The fact was that many of the countries represented had not had studies about family strengths conducted there before, and a discussion of strengths and challenges in their cultures would be a catalyst for more investigation. And this did prove to be the case, uh, and a good deal of new thinking about strength-based perspective in that country emerged. So let me first talk about family strengths. This is the, the the uh, part of the fa International Family Strengths Model that has, uh, we've done the most work on from the very beginning, uh, looking at literally thousands or listening to literally thousands of families in the United States. And at this point, we have uh, conducted research on family strengths in about 27 different countries. So here are what we found. When people around the world describe the qualities that make their family strong, some of these are the traits that they talk about. So the first one is appreciation and affection for each other. People in strong families care deeply about each other and let each other know this on a regular basis. They respect and feel good about each other and they know how important it is to continually express these feelings to each other. Now I want to point out too that it's not done in the same way in every country. Um, every country has their own way of expressing these kinds of things. The second one is positive communication. Positive communication in strong families is the key to success. However, it doesn't mean that you're always going to agree on everything. It works best if you can speak directly to each other and then leave out blaming, condemning, and even denying problems. The next one is commitment to the family. Research uh, around the world reveals story after story of the incredible staying power that families have as mem family members demonstrate uh, their commitment to each other. These kinds of things are trust, honesty, dependability, faithfulness. Enjoyable time together. Time spent together is critical. I think it's important to remember that instead of arguing, should it be quality time or quantity time that we spend with each other, the answer is really that we just need 
quality time in great quantities. <laughs> we need both. Happy childhood memories most commonly center on activities that are shared as a family. A sense of spiritual well-being. The term spiritual well-being is often associated with religion and does include faith in God. Some also describe spiritual well-being as a feeling of oneness with the world, the connection to nature or, the la or land. Some share important ethical values and beliefs, and they're committed to social causes. And the last one is successful management of crisis and stress. Strong families know how to get by during difficult times. During those times, family, families come together and share their grief. They lean on each other. They find a way of rising above the situation and work together towards a common goal. We call this resilience. Families often uh, are stronger as a result of going through those very difficult times. Another important set of strengths are what we call community strengths, another component of the International Family Strengths Model. Strong families contribute to the well-being of communities, and strong communities enhance the development of strong families. A number of important community strengths emerge as we examine the communities around the world, and here are the things that we have been able to find. A supportive environment. Throughout our book, it's evident that the contributions of the community to the family are undeniable. The community serves as an organizer or safety net for many families around the world. Many societies are relatively collectivist in nature, and they've always relied on the group, a group for support. Uh, as our Korean co-author points out, the concept of we-ness for the Korean includes in unity, interdependence, mutual protection, and acceptance. <coughs> Even those countries with a more individualistic orientation find a supportive environment uh, absolutely essential. A good educational delivery system. Another important educational delivery system, and education can be in many forms as well. It can be formal and it can also be informal. Uh, the South African <coughs> co-authors write about the indigenous knowledge systems that are passed on to uh, young people uh, for centuries. This localized education system is based in the community, and information is passed on only by word of mouth. It's kind of a precious picture of this elderly community member just sitting down and visiting with the young boys and girls <coughs> about life. Religious communities. The religious community plays an important role in enhancing spiritual well-being of many families and may also pay, play an important role in supporting families in a variety of other ways, depending on what's going on in that community. The, cha the chapter author from Israel describes the role of religion as that of a social regulator in terms of issues like marriage and passing on values and those kinds of Family service programs. Social services provides communities uh, an important role in family lives. In some countries, family policy is very well defined and provides the needed services to families in those communities. A lot of our authors talked about the lack of good uh, services or access to services. The chapter on Brazil points out that there are many regional disparities between the communities in that country. Government-sponsored programs are needed by families uh, in that country and in many countries, and sometimes they're lacking. A safe, secure, <coughs> helpful environment. Around the world, the community usually takes on the responsibility of protecting the individuals and families. A safe environment is necessary for families to carry out their everyday functions. This is not the case in many countries that have been, has, have been ravaged by terrorism or war or even natural disaster. Rural to urban migration, multicultural strife, urban isolation, 
health crises such as the H HIV AIDS pandemic and a lack of trust have brought about tremendous change that have occurred and weakened the community. So far, I've talked about how the family and community strengths reinforce each other. There's a third level or dimension that I want to talk about now called cultural strengths. The first one is a rich cultural history. The history of cultural groups needs to be considered in our efforts to understand families and their social context. The heritage and historical legacy of each country contributes to the strengths of the family. <coughs> meaning and direction and inspiration for dealing with life's challenges. Individuals and families draw strength from knowing who they are and they find deep comfort and, and a sense of belonging when they have this cultural history. <coughs> for example, Greece is a country whose cultural history seems to call out to future generations, giving them a foundation and a purpose. The author talks about the instability of the area for so many years, 3,000 years to be exact, how these constant changes and struggles have prepared the people with a fighting spirit and a sense of determination. And that is part of the family strengths in that area. Shared cultural meanings. Strong families who share meanings uh, about their culture. Many of the authors include words or maxims that are indigenous only to that country. The authors sometimes even struggled when they tried to translate that for uh, the reader across the world. How do I talk about this idea that only the people in our country would understand? We, we share that, that sense of what that means, and it's hard for me to explain it to other people. It's so embedded in the fabric of their lives that the meaning is only something that those within the culture can really understand and even appreciate. A stable political process. A stable government provides an atmosphere in which families don't have to concern themselves with the daily responsibilities of the country. When the political process is functioning well, people may come to expect that the government is going to continue to provide and protect with a consistency that can be trusted. Families that live in time, times of political unheap of people cannot really rely on the political <coughs> process for support. This makes family life more di difficult, and in some cases around the world it's even dangerous. In Somalia, for example, mass killing, starvation, destruction of resources, and separation of families have resulted from the political civil war that has divided the country. A viable economy. A stable economy contributes to the ability of families to provide for themselves and to gather the necessary resources that they need to sustain their life. Just as political instability can destabilize families, economic pressures and problems often cause societies to make adjustments, ultimately forcing families to change the way they carry out their functions. In some cases, families are forced to con concentrate look solely on just surviving. I, I want to point out here, though, as we talk more about this, that just having a stable politics and stable economy uh, don't guarantee that every individual family is going to be strong. Um, we can look at the strongest uh, political process and the strongest economy across the world today and still find families that are not doing well. While there are many families who may be caught up in a desperate political and economic environment, they may still somehow manage to create positive emotional connections with each other, even as the instability of their social environment is, is not. The under, under, an understanding of the global society is the last one. Learning from other cultures is an important tool in building strong each culture develops creative ways of dealing with many challenges of life brings. Knowledge of other cultures adds innumerable options for families as they create meaningful, stable, and joyful lives together. Increasing information and being aware of the world outside provides a new perception of how one fits in the world and gives a sense of human interconnectedness. 
with all people around the globe. Also stops misunderstanding and reduces fear. In an important sense, the purpose of studying strong families around the world is to help inform the global community. Knowing about strong families in other cultures helps families everywhere to understand the components of what constitutes a healthy family. Any one culture that assumes they have all the answers is not really examined the strengths of other cultures. I think that's one important thing that I've found as I've looked uh, across the world and have been in different countries and observed families and how they interact and how they uh, work together uh, is I can learn so much from other people around the world. Okay, I want to look at two visual perspectives. So, how do family strengths, community strengths, and cultural strengths fit together uh, and mutually influence each other? We can borrow from uh, the ecological model established by Bronson Brenner as an idea of concentric or nested circles, and here is uh, figure one that kind of gives us that idea. Um, starting in the center with family strengths and moving out away from the single family unit to the broad, broader cultural context. As with the ecological model, the influence between these circles is reciprocal in that it, the influence on the family and the community and the culture can be as significant as the influence <coughs> that the community and culture have on the individual family unit. I won't go any further in, uh, with this model. There is a lot more that I could talk about, um, but I want to go on to the other one at this point. The need to, to kind of create a new sense of equilibrium within the community or within their culture. It could be that a family unit is preserved and thrives, but the, the country is politically unstable. In this type of situation, the stability of families is dependent almost solely on the strengths of the individual family and just their immediate community. Even though there may be chaos in the larger environment, the family is still able to continue to nurture and function as a family, even though their cultural heritage has or is threatened. In this model, the equilibrium would be represented by the intersection of only family strengths and community strengths. Another example can be found among the countries that have examined the changes that urbanization has forced among families. And, and often they're separated due to the need for one or more of the family members to go uh, find jobs in the cities and they've left part of their family uh, in the rural area. In this case, the community and the culture have intersected to meet the needs of the family in the absence of the total family unit. Other authors talked about the absence of community support. Here the family strengths and the cultural strengths are the two categories that carry the family through this time. In some cases where the entire culture is in a state of transition, the absence of community and cultural <coughs> strengths leave the family alone to survive only in their internal strengths. Both of these models illustrate the truly amazing ways that families all over the world are able to use their strengths to triumph over the most horrendous conditions and insecure situations. It's also strengths that help families to live in relative prosperity and freedom, to rise above the complacency and that subtle erosion of the family. Certainly communities and cultural heritage contribute to the stability and support of families in all types of circumstances, but ultimately, <coughs> it seems that the individual internal strengths of the family provide that basic foundation. <coughs> it's what keeps the family from gradually disappearing. In conclusion, it's our belief that this study of family strengths, uh, of families and communities and cultures, is still in its infancy. We know we've really only scratched the surface of our examination of global families. What we understand today will probably change tomorrow as we learn more about the diverse ways that families express themselves within the context of their local communities and their cultural heritage. Over 
time, we hope to discover and uncover new truths about how families live and change and grow in the environments they live. They live. And we really look forward to the journey. Thank you.